Hey everyone, welcome back. We will continue our lab journey to the next level where we are going to have VPN gateway functional in active active mode. What it means so, so far what we have seen there's one active VPN gateway because we have never enabled that option to make it active active. It means you are going to have one active gateway and same time you are also going to have a standby gateway and that standby gateway won't be visible to you for any reason if there are some failures this active gateway fails everything will be moved to your standby that means the tunnel what you have built here on top of this public connectivity over the internet it will also be moved back to your second VPN gateway which is in standby mode and it will be transition to active but that will only happen when this fit gateway fails so what we are going to do now we will make it active active and when you make it active active it means it is going to have another instance which is going to be active so this will be active this will also be active earlier there was one public IP which was assigned here now I need to create another public IP address which will be allocated to the second active instance so let's go back to Azure console and we will make our gateway configured for active active I'm already logged into the console so we'll go to gateway and in gateway go to the configuration and under the configuration we need to make a change and that change is going to be active active mode disabled that is the current state let's make it enable and the moment you do it it is going to ask you the second public IP address will get associated to the second instance so let's try to create one and I will name it as second IP address okay and save it it's again going to take some time so I'm going to pause the video and come back once this is updated now I see the deployment is succeeded and we can go back to our resources and see what are the changes made by this deployment so we'll go back to our VPN gateway and in this VPN gateway we'll go to the configuration again and under configuration we can see there are two public IPs are listed now so this is the first public IP address this is the second public IP address after enabling active active now a small change we can see this private IP address has been changed that was 254 if I recall it correctly and now we can see 1.4 and 1.5 here so now we'll go back to GNS3 lab and try to establish tunnel to test the connectivity to the secondary IP address. Let's try to log into router console and test the configuration and the connectivity what we have as of now. So I'm logged into my router and uh, let's see what do we have here. I have one interface which is gigabit 0 slash 0 that is configured for DSCP because I am connected to the NAT object on GNS3 and then we have one loopback address that is representing the local LAN connectivity and then we have a tunnel which was configured earlier now let's take a look on the routing table I have one static route which is pointing to 192.168.122.1 and that is coming because the interface was configured for DSCP that is the same range you can see here nothing else I have let's verify whether I have any manual route entry that is showing nothing now the changes what we need to make if you take a look on first tunnel 
this is the first tunnel we had and now a small change will come here I need to create another interface so what it is saying if you're going to configure active active you need to have two tunnels so I'm going to create another tunnel which is going to be 12 this will have IP address dot 2 and the destination will get changed so let's try to create this tunnel as well tunnel source need to be changed that's going to be same interface and then I'm going to paste rest of the configuration which is going to be the tunnel destination and crypto profile and it's time to create a route so we have two remote destination dot four and dot five so what we are going to do we will create a route before running the BGP I should have reachability at least to these IP address so let's replace it and let's make it slash 32 and I'm going to paste that route as well and now let's try to test the connectivity first so I'm going to ping the same IP address 10.01.4 from my loopback and it works let's try to ping 5 the second it shouldn't work I do not have any route so what do I need to do I need to put another route and this time it is going to be tunnel 12 we'll make it 5 before we create this route for 1.5 towards tunnel 12 we need to make one more changes which is going to be the crypto profile so you cannot reuse the same crypto profile for both the tunnels because there are some parameters which you cannot duplicate it so I am just going to add two to end of every policy what I wrote so in this case it's going to be the I v2 proposal 2 and then policy 2 Keyring to and the profile is going to be 2 as well which we need to apply to tunnel so let me configure these things first then we add the actual route Let me verify the tunnel and in this case we see the tunnel has come up show run interface tunnel 12 and we see the profile 2 is applied and now let's go ahead and this is up and we had only one route and let's try to do one more exercise and see whether that works or not So in route section, I have a single route towards 4. What if I duplicate it and add 1.5 or before adding, I'll, let's try to ping it. ping 10.01.4 source loopback 0 it works let's try to ping dot 5 it doesn't work and now I try to add route 
let me see if that road is still there. Show run include route. No, so let's try to add that route. And that route is going to be dot eleven. If I add this route, will I be able to ping it? Yes, it works. Now let's try to remove this route. And add another route to us twelve. That works too. Let's try to configure BGP and see if that comes up. So what we are going to do, we have only two routes for the reachability purpose and uh, it's time to configure BGP my old BGP configuration it was removed by me so I need to start it from fresh because the peer IP has been changed neighbor is going to be 10.01.4 and remote AS is going to be 5. Update source loopback 0. And we need to turn on eBGP multi hop. And we'll make it 2. Same thing I need to do it for my next peer. So this PGP peer has come up. Let's try to do it for dot five. And this peer has also come up. The last thing we need to do, let's try to advertise the network. And the network in this case is going to be 10.0 mask 255 255 255.0. This is the network. will be advertised to a spear. Let's try to verify that. Show IPBGP neighbor And why do we see something like this? I'm receiving, so technically I'm running two BGP sessions. I'm receiving slash 16 prefix, which is being received from the is neighbor on one tunnel. And then it is trying to advertise it back to second tunnel and that is expected also now what do we want to do here we'll go back and check the 
Azure console side, how the status looks like. I'm already logged into the console, so let's click on our VPN gateway and we'll go to the connections directly. And we do see the status for our connection is connected. So one thing to remember, both the tunnels, they are going to be part of the same connection what we created. You do not need to create a separate connection to build the second tunnel. And now let's verify the BGP pairing now. It might take a couple of seconds to pop up the full information. And here it is. So let's talk about PS first. So this is the second tunnel what we built and this is going to be eBGP session. And then you are going to have one session between your VPN gateway, which is those are going to be active active. That's going to be IBGP. It's forming neighbor to self and I don't know what is the significance and why it is showing unknown here, but that is something in my opinion not needed. Then we have second BGP is eBGP session on the first tunnel. And then you have a reverse of what we have seen here. That's a IBGP session between both the VPN gateway. And now let's verify the routing table. In the routing table we see we are receiving slash 24 over the tunnel. That's going to be EVGP learn route. Similarly, we see here, this is the first tunnel. And then you see the same route is also being learned over IBGP. So whatever we have learned over this eBGP that will be further advertised to IBGP peer as well. Now let's go back and verify few more commands output on GNS3. If I go back to GNS3 and run this command show IP BGP detail, this is what we see. There's a routing entry for Azure VNet range, which is slash 16. And there are two paths available. One is coming from dot five. Second one is coming from dot four. Those are the private IP address where we form the pairing. So you have two routes technically coming to your router. But if you take a look on this one, this is going to be the preferred because you have two and BGP is going to run the algorithm to choose the best path which get installed to the routing table. There's always need of resetting your gateway and the connection while you're troubleshooting when the tunnels are not coming up. So you have option on Azure site to reset your gateway. So if you go to the VPN gateway and go to the reset, you can reset it from here. It will reset the appliance, the VMs where you are running the gateway. And you can also reset your connections. If you go to connection, uh, there is also a reset option. And th these are available on the Azure side. However, on the Cisco router, it is as usual. You can clear your crypto security associations and reset your tunnels. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next section.